because you're way too good. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to a new live session from NZ Pocket oh. Guide. Today we are going to be talking about traveling in New Zealand with you guys. But first, we need to celebrate a fantastic day. It is today International Day of Plastic. No, no, not using plastic bag day. Plastic bag free day. This is the word, plastic Yay. bag free days. So try not to use a single plastic bag for the whole day today. That'd or be a fun thing to do. maybe for the rest of your life. Yes, what about, what about, you know, go big or go home. So mm. that is one of the international day today. Uh, there is another international day, which was very silly. I'm just going to put it up right here because I, I already can't remember it. Uh, because that was so, so, so silly. And they always Oh, are. yeah. That is uh, eat beans day. So that's not that's not too too silly. I mean, eat beans. Eat beans. Anyway, all right, cool. We talk about traveling in New Zealand, so let's focus on that. So we're gonna answer all your questions that you guys have in the live chat. So you just have to pop in your questions about traveling in New Zealand because we kind of are the experts of traveling in New Zealand. And the reason why we call ourselves the experts of traveling in New Zealand is because we are the team behind NZ Pocket Guide, which is New Zealand's largest travel guide. And there is thousands and thousands of articles for you to uh, to check out up here and here. Look at that. I put it both everywhere on screen right here. And it's all free for you guys to use, which is quite fun. Um, yeah. So that's basically it. Laura is uh, wrapping up her Tetris 99 game. She's actually not doing too bad today. So, uh, oh, actually, now she's doing oh, terrible. Yeah. Now that I pointed out. Okay. So that's what we have in the live chat. We have Nathan Baith. That says, Kia ora. Good morning, Robin and Laura. How are you doing today? We're doing pretty well. It is very frosty it's this very morning. Frosty it is morning. extremely frosty. There are clouds. There is frost everywhere. There is ice on every plant. How, so, how many merino wool layers do you have on today, Robin? Uh, I have two merino wool layers on. What many merino wool layers are you wearing, Laura? I'm wearing three. Wow. Okay. She is one Underneath than I am. this jumper. We have Adil. That says, Kia ora, Robin, Laura. Kia ora, Adil. Kia ora. We have Comas that, say, that says, Salut de la France. Salut, Comas. Mm -hmm. uh, comment ça va? We have Anthony Comstock that says, Morena from Rodeo, California. If you guys don't know what Morena means, it means good morning in Maori, which is the local indigenous language. And we have Kaylo. She says, hey, guys. How are you doing, Kaylo, today? All right. Let me just get this setting started right here. And... Go ahead with some comments. So I'm going to get started today with something a little bit different. Oh, we have Baby Burns and Zeta says, what's up, guys? How what's are you up? doing? So we're going to start with something a little bit different. There's a guy called Robert, um, and he de decided to kind of go over the news, the latest news about like COVID-19 news and all that. So I'm just going to uh, read a little bit of a few of the snippets that he gathered for us. So this segment is going to be Robert's news, and that is COVID-19 in New Zealand. So... A news outlet called News Hub uh, yesterday said that Cathay Pacific is set to resume passenger flights in and out of Auckland later this month. Uh, the Hong Kong airline has been operating cargo-only flights during the COVID-19 pandemic, but it announced on Friday that passenger services would be returning on July the 8th. Uh, the announcement comes after easy, the easing of restrictions in on Hong Kong and Cathay Pacific will operate one flight in and, uh, in and out of Aotearoa every week, in addition to an Air New Zealand-operated code share flight operating on the same route. The quote is, following a brief suspension of our Auckland services, uh, we are looking forward to returning to New Zealand skies this month as part of our effort to support Kiwis who need to travel. Cathay Pacific Southwest Pacific Manager Rakesh Raykar said, and he also said, the safety of our passenger is a number one priority and we have enhanced well-being measures across every stage of their journey to provide peace of mind. Passengers can also continue to travel with confidence knowing that they have the freedom of making unlimited changes to their new tickets uh, without any fees. Passengers flying into Auckland will still need to abide by the New Zealand border controls, including... Uh, reserving and securing their place in a managed isolation facility or MIQ before they board their flight as part of the New Zealand government's uh, latest um, managed isolation allocation systems. Kiwis traveling to Hong Kong and beyond will also need to check they are uh, up to date with the latest government guidance for each country. And yeah, now the flight will operate on Thursdays departing Auckland. And uh, yeah, in Hong Kong, they're going to leave 
that yeah i don't need to tell you that and face covering will be mandatory on flight so that's one of the news related to covid19 uh still to robert's report we're going to go for uh, next news this is from stuff uh new zealand so stuff new zealand is not a good news outlet but we'll read this one anyway but i do not recommend using stuff as a as a news outlet radio new zealand is a much better news outlet um okay uh, today's opening of the New Zealand borders will be dependent uh, on not just how many have been vaccinated, but how many vulnerable uh, people have been vaccinated. Uh, that's what uh, Mr. Hashley Bloomfield said. Uh, he says also there is no set target for COVID vaccination. But so the Director General of Health, Dr. Ashley Bloomfield, is hoping that 90% coverage will be reached by the end of 2021. Uh, the Treasury has made budgeting assumptions based on the significant reopening of the border from January. And it is equally important for international visitors to experience New Zealand, to learn from us, while at the same time providing economic benefits, he said. We're not going to live forever like a hermit kingdom, he said. So there is a hope that, that the border may reopen. <laughs> and uh, he said, uh, Tourism New Zealand... Tourism is New Zealand's largest export earner, and it has been crippled by New Zealand's borders closure. Pre-COVID, uh, tourism was worth $41.9 billion a year and contributed to 20% of New Zealand's foreign exchange earning. Uh, tourism New Zealand figures show the absence of international tourists is estimated to have resulted in a 13, 30 billion less for the industry per year. So we want that money, so the borders may reopen at some point. <laughs> Okay, another news. That's from Radio New Zealand. Good job, Robert. That's a good news outlet. And uh, that is actually something slightly bit different. Uh, so New Zealand has ranked second on a list of countries uh, ordered by how much they've returned to normal since the pandemic. So that means that New Zealand is one of the top countries that has basically returned to life as normal since the pandemic. The Economist has developed a normalcy index, which ranked nations by their progress. The normalcy index tracked eight variables, sport attendance, time at home, traffic congestion, retail footfall, office occupancy, flights, film box office, and public transport. For 50 countries representing about 75% of global population and 90% of global GDP, Hong Kong tops the list at 96% normality, and New Zealand follows at 87% normality, behind likely in large uh, behind likely in large part due to COVID-19 border closures and travel restrictions. Mm -hmm. Here you go. And the last news of the day. If, by the way, if you guys do enjoy um, as you know, a new segment the at the beginning, tell me. I may do that every time now. Okay. The last news related to uh, the uh, border uh, is from Bloomberg Newswire. So the New Zealand government has, in principle, agreed to raise the border processing levy for air passenger to 63 New Zealand dollars, which is 44 US dollars. And the, the, the price before was 20 New Zealand dollars. So from 20 to 63. On December 1st, the increase is going to take place. Tourism Industry Aotearoa, that's the a big uh, organization that groups all the tourism businesses, said on Friday in Wellington, citing document obtained under the Official Information Act, the levy used to fund custom and biosecurity services will rise from 30 to sorry, $35.36 from $21 for cruise passenger. So if you come by plane, your levy is going to be $63. If you come by cruise, it's going to be $35.36. Um, while, while quarantine-free travel has resumed with Australia, the government and company like Auckland International Airport has have signaled they don't expect the border to fully reopen until sometime in 2022. So, yeah, that is no news right here. All right, that was a little bit of news for you guys. What has been happening on the live chat? Comas uh, says, moi ça va, j'adore the video. So he say he's doing well, he really likes our videos. That's nice, Comas. Cool. Anthony Comstock says, so did you guys get your first dose of the vaccine? Yes, we did. Uh, we had to delay it for a couple of days, but it happened on Thursday, Thursday. Thursday. It happened on <laughs> Thursday. Our arms were a little bit sore, but that, that was all right. Keep an eye on a video on Saturday. I'm going to show you what it looks like to get the vaccine in New Zealand. Um, so, yeah, I, I have a video ready for you guys next Saturday, and you can see us getting the vaccines. Yes, you can join us on that journey. Laura G is in the house. She says, hey, guys. How are you doing, Laura G? Hello. Awesome. That's a great name. Um... Koma says he's waiting to be able to see us. Um, that's cool. That's nice to say. <laughs> cool. Lovely. 
uh, comma 77. Then we have Kalo. She says, is New Zealand considered a part of the continent of Australia or Oceania? Well, it's always debatable. I think Australia is in Oceania, isn't it? Well, yeah, Australia, the continent is Oceania, and then Australia is a country, and New Zealand is a country, both on the continent yep. of Oceania. Uh, here you go, Geography by Laura. <laughs> Clay says, I just rewatched the whitewater rafting video in Queenstown. Did you go whitewater rafting here in Dunedin? No, we have no, not. No, we have not whitewater rafting in Dunedin. Have you, Clay? Yes, Let us, us know about it if you have. Um, the closer to Denny than we've done probably is Rangitata Raft, but that's yeah. still a bit of a drive, yeah. but near Geraldine. Mm. Um, but it's still a bit of a drive, but that's really epic. Yeah. You may want to check Rangitata Rafting um, if you want to take the kids. Yeah, they are, current, they are currently in hibernation yes. because of COVID at the moment, but um, I think they are planning to open up once uh i think probably once the borders open up so keep that keep that in you know on the on the back burner until the borders are open uh kiwi loren says hey team question i saw your travel advice for people traveling in new zealand in july yeah we posted that uh, yesterday uh, july 2021 uh -huh. yeah she said who is your target audience for that video australian pacific islander maybe who is it open to at this point? Okay, so uh, first up, it's more uh, getting a habit. I'm gonna start doing that every month. I think like a short one minute video that I can put on both YouTube and Facebook and everything may be informative. So I just wanna get into the habit of doing that. So that's the first first thing, right? Now, who can come and travel to New Zealand? Uh, there is quite a few Pacific Islanders that definitely can come travel to New Zealand. And there is obviously also Australians. Uh, now it has been kind of uh, stopped again because there's some more outbreaks. So it's on and off, but it's still happening so first up creating a habit for me second yes australian and pacific islander that's basically basically it yeah and, and, people and that locals are obviously there's a lot of locals yeah. yeah uh extreme talauta says morena morena, morena. um Mosen says hi with plenty of emojis mm -hmm. how are you doing motion Kim Lorenz says, pardon me if I missed the border info since I tuned in a couple of minutes late. In any case, I am completely jealous of whoever is traveling to New Zealand in July 2021. <laughs> um, yeah, no, there is not major info. I, I did yeah. a quick news round there because Robert did all the work for me. So I was like, yeah, may as well, you know, he's been really nice. By the way, if you did like this quick uh, news roundup right here, just make sure you say to us in the comments, uh, because I want to know if you guys want me to do that kind of regularly. I'll tell Robert to dig in some of the news mm. uh, for us more and regularly. And if you want us to make a news roundup jingle, also let us know. <laughs> okay, it will have to be <laughs> sang by Laura. So, um, yeah, what would it sound like, Laura? Well, um, I've got a few ideas in the works, but nothing that I can show you today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, tell us if you want us to do the news a little bit or not. Okay, um, Mossen says, hit the like button. That is a good thing to do. There's 21 of you guys. Can we get 21 people to hit like right now? That'd be epic. Yeah. Um, yeah, just to say thank you for all the hard work. That'd be lovely. Baby, but oh no, Durai. I almost missed you, Durai. No, 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 I read it. Back up. It says, hi guys, let me know the details of Essential Skills Visa News Update. Well, we don't have any um, updates on that, first of all, because we are more of a travel channel rather than like an immigration channel. So it's not really sort of um, the stuff that we cover on there. There's a law in New Zealand where to give immigration advice, you need to be um, a legal immigration advisor, which we are not. So we can't really give you the details of all that. Um, however, it's best to go to the Immigration New Zealand website, which Ooh, Robin, just forget? <laughs> Robin will put the, um, the website address on the screen in just a moment. Um, it's best to sort of um, do all that sort of research on the Immigration New Zealand website so you actually get up-to-date information because that is the official government website for immigration in New Zealand. So there yeah. you go. Yeah, go to that screen. website. Nice. We prepared. We prepared. I did not forget <laughs> at all, guys. <clears throat> okay. Baby Burns says, got a question for you. If you got a place or city to live for the rest of your life in New Zealand, just one, forever, where would it forever? be? Forever? I want to go first. Okay. I will move to Stewart Island. Uh, Stewart mm. Island is all the way at the bottom of the South Island. It's kind of a mostly a national park. Uh, there is amazing wildlife there. Um, it's quite isolated, but there is still like thriving kind of like tourism there, uh, which I think is pretty fantastic. The internet will be really poor, so expect worse live session. <laughs> but yeah, I would definitely want to go um, to Stuart Island because I do, I do really love the outdoors. I want to open my doors and be able to 
see amazing birds and, yeah. and greenery. Not like we can't see it here. It's fantastic as well, wherever we're here now, we, we live now. But if I had one place I could live in, that would be Stewart Island. Yeah, that would be good. And um, for me, I think, uh, well, now that Robin said Stewart Island, I want to go live on Stewart Island. But um, the one that comes to my head is the town of Pocketica <laughs> in on the west coast of the South Island. Oh, I think that's, that's a, cool. It's a really nice little, a little town and just the west coast of the South Island in general. So for those of you that don't know, that's where you can find the Punakaiki Pancake Rocks, for example, or the Franz Joseph Glaciers, that sort of thing. Um, that's sort of all on the west coast and there's lots of really amazing places to explore there. It's really rugged, wild, lots of amazing hiking. Um, and Hokitika, it's... it's um, branded as a cool little town but it really is a cool little town i find it, it really really lovely so i wouldn't mind living there nice um that's a cool question baby burns i like it mm. Ariane malsang says hello hello, hello. Ariane. he says will you help me to give information related to some jobs um so on this channel we mostly talk about tourism right and traveling in new zealand and, and all that right so we could dabble a little bit into uh what a kind of backpacker job will be you know will be like what backpackers coming to new zealand and doing a few work along the way may want to do so we can dabble a little bit on that and we do have plenty of videos on the channel already about that but when it comes down to specific jobs um usually it's not the right place because well, we work for ourselves, so that's basically the one thing that yeah. we kind of know mostly. Yeah. We're not really career experts. Yes, we're not career so, experts. Yeah. Yeah. So you're more than welcome to ask questions, but do be aware that we may just say, listen, we don't know. Because that's also one thing that we do a lot on this channel. If we don't know about something, we'd rather tell you we don't know rather than make up a random answer for you. Uh, we want to make sure that you get the right information and we don't spread like misinformation. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Ian. Feel free to put your questions in the, in the live chat right now and we'll see if we can um, answer them for you. Uh, we have Laura G. She says, thanks. I'm good. Nice to see you for the first live video. Yeah. So Laura G actually asked me on the on the live chat, uh, sorry, on, on one of the comments of the video. She was like, how can I join the live session? I was like, show up. Tune in. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> simple. So yeah, yeah uh, easy as. She says she loved the news part of the video. Okay, cool. cool. All right. Robert, you did a good job. Look, Laura says she, she, she like it. This Laura says she's like yeah, it. Yeah, I like it too. Yeah. Nathan says, I did enjoy the news about the COVID-19 information. Here you oh, go. Nathan you go. likes it as well. Three people like it. Here you go. Kiwi Lauren says... I think you need to put a poll up, Robin. Okay, well, I would do a poll. Do you want to read what Kiwi Lauren says? Yeah, do? so That's Kiwi Lauren poll. says... <laughs> yeah. uh, my, my son just ran into the room and said, that Kiwi stuffy is cute. Looks like the two of us in this household are in love with Wheat Bix. Yes, he is rather ad adorable, isn't he? So interestingly enough, um, he did gain his name from a poll uh, kind, kind of similar to what Robin is putting up on screen for you guys right now or putting up on the live chat for you guys right now. Um, basically, you guys, for those of you who haven't seen, you guys were the ones that came up with the name for this Kiwi bird, which is Wheat Bix, which is... Um, yeah, for those of you who don't know, that is a uh, it's an interesting breakfast cereal that you can find in New Zealand. Some people love it, some people hate it, some people have high and strong opinions on wheat bix. Well, <laughs> I just don't like the name. I do like I do like like him or her. We haven't even decided if it's a him or her just yet. Well, you can't really tell with this, yes. so. It's okay. like chicken. You have to blow a little bit. And <laughs> yeah. You know, like the baby chicks. You have to do like something like. And then you can tell. YouTube will ban us for that sort of uh, yeah. behavior. Yeah, how dare right? you, how dare you. Uh, okay, cool. Colleen Nevin says, uh, hi, guys. I really enjoyed the live. Do you have any idea when the Irish people could travel to New Zealand on a working holiday visa? Well, that, that's, a bit rough. that's a bit tough. So we do have a video on the channel about our latest border prediction. And I'm currently working on an updated one. So you guys can expect one. Let's say by the end of uh, what month today? July. July. By the end of July, I will have a new video with new prediction in there. But I don't think that's going to be happening until 2022, right? Just to, just to be really clear. But uh, I'm going to put something on screen for you. You literally just have to search on YouTube, uh, NZ Border Predictions. And if you search that, you will find a video of us where we actually give in-depth prediction. And we actually do talk about Ireland, actually. So, um, so yeah. So you will have in-depth border predictions um for everything we think uh we think will happen when it comes down to that come on yes mm -hmm. here you go search that on youtube 
Yeah. Uh, Colleen, and you'll find that video with all the information that we have. But yeah, it will take some time. It's not it's not happening anytime soon. Yeah. But Basically, I would say, yeah. yeah, I will say if you start planning now and and you know, like if let's say you want to come at this time next year, right? Also, it's low season. It's better to start a working holiday. You've probably seen a lot of our videos when we give tips that this is kind of a really good month to start it. So let's say this time next year, I think it's there's a strong possibility that that may happen for you. Yeah. Uh, but of course you yeah. can't um you can't really um what's the word apply for the working holiday visa until until yeah. it's you know until the borders are open because immigration new zealand aren't processing visas basically until people are allowed to come back into the country um so yeah keep that in mind as well that d don't try and apply for a visa too early before you know that you can actually come to new zealand all right so i have a i have a poll going on right now because because polls you know and uh, polls. yeah, <laughs> polls, you know, I do polls. I, I like polls. It's, it's my a new feature toy. of the live chat that yeah, we enjoy so now. <laughs> in the live chat, you guys can vote. And I ask you guys, should we uh, do a quick news roundup every week? And so, yeah, go nuts. So far, yes is uh, winning with 82% and no is at uh, 18%. So, yeah. Cool. So we have Kalo that uh, says just dot. Dot. Here you go. She has, she has not much to say today. No. She's just, uh, you know. Sometimes the you just have to stay quiet type. and be mysterious, you know, and you yeah. just kind of create interest from the audience. But That's just good. so you guys know, we do read every single comment, <laughs> even if it is just a full stop. <laughs> Durai says, please come to Doha in Qatar. Always welcome. Well, oh, that, that, sounds, that sounds warm. To be fair, it's really cold right now in New Zealand. Yeah, so. I wouldn't mind going right now. Yeah, it sounds pretty warm. <laughs> uh, what do we have? We have Aryan that says, thank you, pronounce, uh, thanks, you pronounce my name incorrectly uh, many people don't oh that's nice well listen i got lucky because i wasn't sure <laughs> and he says uh yeah i like your tourism ideas and you have always best view on tourism and you grow new zealand tourism oh that's lovely mm -hmm. uh, hopefully we do in some ways yeah it's nice to be appreciated yeah kimi loren has a bit of an anecdote uh, she okay. says i was at a pub quiz one night in wellington and one of the challenges between questions was to eat Whitbix that had soaked in vinegar all day. Oh, oh, that is bad. It was nasty. And one guy threw up. Uh, <laughs> not his finest moments. Wow. Well, honestly, I'd rather not get the point. So and, uh, there is a form of wheat bix torture as well, which I guess some people would argue just eating wheat bix as a cereal is a form of torture. But I would argue that <laughs> yeah. wheat bix is not food. But there is, uh, there is, it's actually used in New Zealand now. We we just had it confirmed. It's actually used as a form of torture. So that that's pretty rough. Clay says, uh, "Yes, I've been in. Uh, I've been, and it was the most fun that I've uh, ever had in freezing <laughs> water." Yeah. So he's talking about white water rafting in Dunedin. He says, "Yes, he's been to white water rafting in Dunedin, and it was a lot of fun, but it was really cold." Yeah, it tends to be like that. But luckily, uh, luckily in these sort of um, activities in New Zealand where you are getting in the water, they do tend to keep you up pretty well with nice thick wetsuits, yeah, booties extra fleeces under underneath the layers if you need it so um yeah as long as you keep on moving and they, they keep you upright then you tend to be okay indeed we have baby burns uh that probably follows up on uh her comment about where we would love to live in new zealand oh, yeah and she said i've spent a night in hoktika last time i was there and i love it i love the community there even though it is small park the camper in front of the toilet near the beach yeah it's <laughs> yeah. nice I agree oh. with that. And uh, she's also asking, is there any community in Stuart? Uh, I tried to find info on how getting there and the situation there, but it's really minimal on the internet. Well, maybe you want to head to NZ's Pocket Guide. So let me just show that to you um, for a change. Let me just pop that up. Here you go. And then we're going to go here. Look at that, baby burns. If you go here, you go on destinations and South Island right here. And right to the bottom. Right bottom there's two art island and there's plenty of guides for you to tell you oh there's also some oh, ads, there's also ads. Oh, oh dare we put some ads trying to make money yeah i mean this is shocking that us trying to sometimes make a living <laughs> shocking um so yeah so you have two art island guide for backpacker you have the best thing to do there national park the complete guide on the budget you have the luxury you have the travel guide for families if you're traveling with your family so there's plenty of information for you to travel in stewart island right there mm. so we got you covered yeah so nzpocketguide.com then destinations then south island then you scroll all the way down to stewart island 
You know why it's all the way down? Because Tuatana is all the way down. Mm. So here you go. I hope that was helpful. Yeah. To also, you, you can check out some videos that we have done on YouTube. If you just uh, search on YouTube, Stuart Island, NZ Pocket Guide, we have videos of us actually visiting the island and staying there for a few days and you'll get an idea of what the town is like and also what the, well, actually 80% of the island is a national park. So we do a multi-day hiking trail there. So you also get to see what much of the environment looks like as well. And yeah, some of its uh, residents there are kiwi birds and we do get lucky and get a chance to uh, spot some kiwi birds. So that's Indeed. Cool. All right, there's still a survey to ask if we should do a news roundup every week. Um, 22 votes. YouTube is telling me that literally this is the most popular survey we've ever done on YouTube. Wow. So here you go. So keep on voting if you guys are keen. I'm going to leave it up for about 10 minutes. Uh, Nathan Bay says, did you get some snow when it snowed during the week? Ah, well, not where we're living, no. but uh, no. But all the mountains we can see around, they all have snow on top. Yeah. So yeah, uh, there is snow around for sure. Mm. Yousef says, please, can I visit New Zealand without quarantine? Not at the moment, sadly. No. There are uh, quarantine restrictions at the moment in New Zealand. Yeah, so first of all, the borders are closed to almost all international visitors. There's a very, very few amount of people that can actually come into the country. And for those people that can come into the country, they do have to do a mandatory two weeks quarantine in a quarantine facility in New Zealand, which IE is just a hotel um but yeah quarantine uh is a uh, is a thing that's happening at the moment unfortunately so yeah kelo says i think that i may have asked this question before but i can't remember mm -hmm. which direction is prettier the drive to milford sound or the drive coming away from milford sound Ooh. or the drive to milford sound for sure because yeah you're going down right so while you drive down you have like a grander view than when you drive up where you see more of the road so definitely Driving down to Milford Sound is prettier. Then you go down to Milford Sound. Uh, you know, you can maybe take the bus going down and it's really pretty. And then, and then you, you can take, take your flight back. So I think that's why you're asking <laughs> the question. But yeah, so you drive down and then you fly back out. That's yeah. the best way to do it. Uh, if that's what you're asking. We think that's what you're asking, Kalo. But yeah. Colleen says, thank you so much for all the help. We're very you're happy welcome. to help, Colleen. Uh, yeah, no worries. Keep on firing questions. We are here to help. By the way, if you want to say thank you for all our help, feel free to hit the like button and if you want to say double thank you you take one article from nz pocket guide and you share it on facebook or on instagram and uh yeah that's the the thank you or the double thank you here you go yeah. kiwi lauren says it was uh plus 41 degrees celsius here yesterday wow. no no it's fahrenheit it cannot be 41 celsius are you kidding me oh yeah no it can there's be there's such extremes in temperature where you're living kiwi lauren it's yeah. crazy. Like, I feel like, well, time goes pretty quickly. She's in Canada, just so you know, guys. We left yeah. New Zealand right here. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, like, I feel like it was only, what, a month ago? You were like, oh, it's minus 40 degrees Celsius. Well, maybe not that much. But it's crazy. We don't even, in New Zealand, you don't even really experience plus 41 degrees Celsius. So, that yeah, that's insane. And Laura G, she says, okay, I have a serious question for you guys. Being yes. immigrant in New Zealand, have you always felt that you've been accepted by locals and communities? Have you ever felt as the outsiders? Thanks for answering. Laura, what do you think about that? Um, I would say probably a lot less than expected. Um, I feel like the good thing about New Zealand is that there are a lot of people that have immigrated here. So it's quite the norm to be someone from another country. Um, I mean, people do often make assumptions, I guess, where, when we live, we live in a small town, for instance. So if we go and do something, you know, out in the community, well, for instance, when we went to go and get our vaccines recently, um, people, you know, people were talking to us sort of assuming we were just here traveling, despite the borders being closed. So that wouldn't make quite <laughs> sense. But, um, you know, people do assume that we don't live here, of course. Sass. So, um, you know, people would, uh, people sort of, make assumptions that we don't live here but we do so um that's like just minor things but yeah. we, we are we you know we have um yeah so we have um uh you know people that we uh, sorry i completely lost my train of thought um, so yeah, yeah. There, there are some people that accept you there are some people that don't accept you but most people really do accept you yeah I, i'm going to show you uh, my, my screen right now so if you browse a little bit of videos on uh, on the channel right so you click on videos right here there is a video with uh, 10 uh, biggest mistakes for first timers in new zealand which is just right here 
you may want to check it out. It's kind of, uh, you know, kind of our experience of being a first time or like a kind of migrant in New Zealand. Mm. So it's kind of, it may be quite interesting to you to check this one out. And uh, we do also have one uh, for mistakes when planning a trip to New Zealand. We, you may also want to check out the pros and cons of life in New Zealand for from Laura and from I. We have two videos for that. And Sandy, you just have to type pros and cons on uh, on the search bar right here. Um, uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm not going to show you pros, cons. And uh, yeah, you see there is my video and her video. And then you really get an understanding about our take as migrants in New Zealand. I think uh, I think you may really uh, like that for you. But to make it even easier for you, my dear, I'm going to place one link right here. It's one of those three videos. I don't know which one I copied. <laughs> but I think that's going to be handy for you, Laura. Yeah. I just don't know which one it is. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, basically... Sorry, did you want no, to go? No, go. I was just going to say, basically, in short, I feel like, um, I mean, you, you're not going to always be accepted by everyone because who, whoever is, um, <laughs> but I, even in your own country. But I feel like, you know, we, we have friends that are both also immigrants to New Zealand, but we also have Kiwi friends as well. So it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of like, you you know, that in New Zealand, there's, there's good eggs and there's bad eggs. And um, it's kind of just like a mixed bag. But we feel like we haven't had any major hurdles of fitting in, really, or feeling like we're outsiders so yeah that's a uh, just what i just wanted to add onto the end of that sorry about the whole mix up right here with uh, with the screen by the way i did not notice that uh, i was messing things up but <laughs> i think we should be back normally yeah okay we're gonna go a little bit faster because there's a lot of you guys asking questions so clay says uh rafting in dunedin says it's a calm river where families hand uh, uh hand and play he says so we wear jacket helmet fully equipped and we arrive at the Glen uh, to heaps of people laughing at us dressed like oh, that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not many people uh, realize it's super nuts further up. Uh, I think it's grade two or three. Yeah. And that was Clay's useless Dunedin fact for the day. No, that was Ooh. nice. Thank you very much for sharing, Clay. That was good. There is, there is much more to do and see in Dunedin than people realize. So yeah. I just want to point out, if you, you do have some time. Yeah. So I was just going to say, Clay often um, does uh, like add a few little... Um, more sort of local, pl like places that only sort of locals know about. Like, was it the pyramid in Dunedin or something? It was called the um, octagon. Uh, no, no, no. There's the there's like um, sort of like a pyramid shape on the o Otago Peninsula. He was talking oh, about yeah, one yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. there's like a few a few extra cool little places that we had we hadn't even heard about either. So yeah, it's always good to tell us more about the secrets of Dunedin. Ian says, in which city do you live? So we don't live in a city. We live in a very, very small town in the center of the North Island. So if you look at a map of New Zealand, there's a big lake in the center of the North Island, and we live just right on the shore of that beautiful lake. Um, that's where we're at, because it's very easy for us to go a little bit everywhere. Milan De Neo Physio says, finally, I changed my plans for study in New Zealand. I hope even next year, throughout the year, borders may close for international students. Well, hopefully the borders will open uh, in 2022. That's the hope and that's the plan. So hopefully this will work. Mm. Ben, Fug F Fury. ben Fury says, thanks for sharing. I'll be heading back to my country soon, but I really hope to visit the South. I'm alone here. Is there any tips for that or any group I can go to uh, or hop in to have some bucks? To save, to save some, some, bucks. Bucks. Save some We do have actually a lot of tips uh, uh, to save money on the NZ Pocket Guide, actually. So if you go on nzpocketguide.com and then you go, I'll, I'll show it to you. Let's see if that works this time. Tell me if you guys can see the screen. I don't know. I, it has been a bit buggy today, but let's have a look. If I do that, I'm just going to double check that you can see the screen. We're experiencing some technical difficulties yeah, why today. Why is it not working today? Why is my shortcut broken? Sorry. Perhaps. Perhaps. But yeah, um, we do have information as, as Robin is just trying to figure out, um, showing yeah, you guys tips. the website. Um, but yeah, if you go on to nzpocketguide.com, you can head to our travel tips section. And um, in there, we, all, we have a full category about budgeting, which helps you, gives you advice on how to save money to travel, but also how to save a lot of money while you're traveling around New Zealand. Um, and yeah, we Got travel tips, travel advice. Here you go, and budget yeah. right here. Yeah. There is plenty of tips for you, just right there. I don't know why it's so buggy. Why is it? Oh, because of that. Here you go. Now that should be good. What was the cap lock? Yes, on? yes, that was Classic. a cap lock. I'm sorry, guys. I'm Classic sorry, guys. Cap locks. Okay, Mistake. I got I figured it out. We're back. We're back on track <laughs> now, people. Okay, nice. 
Uh, then we do have, um, okay, if you want to reward me, by the way, for figuring out how the computer works, you can hit the like button because honestly, this was a mess. <laughs> Extreme I don't Talata. Think you should be rewarded for that, Robin. <laughs> Extreme Talata says, I'm going to jump off soon. I have to have a warm up for the rugby league game. I've Ooh. got the first game this morning. How do you have a game to referee right now when it's literally frozen everywhere <laughs> I see? There is literally ice on the floor. Yeah. I hope it's warmer in uh, Tokoroa yeah. than, um, than it is here. Uh, Nathan, which is based in Topo, which is in central North Island as well, he says, we had snow at home and oh, wow. school, which started at 11 a.m. Wow, that's amazing. No, we did not have snow on the other side no. of that lake. Baby Burns says, thanks, guys. One question again. If you had to choose one, goes on a camper van trip or just rent a car going uh, faster than spend your extra money on night in a nice hotel. I will personally choose mostly the car and the hotel just because I find it much easier to kind of go to all the places you want to go to and everything. Um, you save a lot of money on gas. Uh, you have better night's rest. Um, so, yeah, so I personally prefer the um, car and hotel. I wouldn't just stay in host hotels, to be quite fair. There's a lot of hostels and backpackers, which are really fantastic. So I do really like also the community field. They have their own kitchen, so you mm. can cook food there. So it doesn't have to be a pricey endeavor to um to stay in a car and in a hotel so i will stay in car and hostels with private room and shared facility that's what i will choose yeah if i can uh, twist a little bit the question yeah and also on on top of hostels there's also for instance holiday parks which um although most people think that they're really for people camping for instance they usually have cabins and things like that so it's another sort of um more of a motel style accommodation where you have like self-catering facilities and stuff so we would uh yeah, well, I, I would suggest also when you're driving around, you can stay in holiday parks as well. Yeah. There's actually a, there's a loads of different types of accommodation. Of course, there's Airbnb stays as well. So, yeah, um, I actually wouldn't go for the nice hotel option just because I feel like that's kind of spending a lot of money for the sake of spending a lot of money. Yeah, if you're like in a honeymoon or something, or if you really want to treat yourself, then you can go for the nice mm. hotels. But I feel like you can get some really good alternative kind of accommodation. And that's more kind of the thing that we tend to be doing yeah. when we travel around. We're not really big on Airbnb. We, there's so many hit and misses in New Zealand. We kind of completely stopped. Yeah. Um, so, yes, yeah, so it's not really our thing. But that's why on NZ Pocket Guide, on the accommodation tab, you know, like we have a lot of recommendation on every places. We've been to, you know, hundreds of accommodations in New Zealand. And so that's why we always have a mix. And, you know, when we say the best accommodation, there is literally like sometimes there's some holiday park, there's some, you know, hostels, there's some hotels, there's a mix of everything because everybody travels slightly bit differently. And we just want you guys to get the best for like the way you like to travel. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Kiwi Loren says, so it's seriously nuts in Saskatchewan. Yesterday was 31 degrees Celsius. Wow. On Marona 8 a.m. And it stuck uh, to me that over the past five months I've run in an 82 degree Celsius wow, range. The coldest yeah. run was in minus 51. Yeah, okay, now you're nuts as well. <laughs> you're as nuts as the weather to yeah, just get that, out by crazy. minus 51. So, guys, come to New Zealand. Don't go to Canada. They're crazy <laughs> over there. <laughs> Mosson says, suggestion. I love to see price presentation for electric devices and tools uh, like PB Tech, you buy Noah Liming, NZ Electronics, Warehouse Stationery, Rubber Key. Um, okay, so, um, so yeah, I'm unsure what you're asking. You want us to tell you what's the average prices for like computers and everything? Is that is that mm -hmm. what you if you can clarify? If that, you can elaborate great. your question so we yeah. can understand it a bit better, a bit better, yeah. that would be good. That'd be super handy. Yeah, Beverly Gibson says, Howdy from Montana. Howdy, Howdy mate. <laughs> <laughs> what is this show that I'm watching right now, which sounds really Montana? Just a just Justified. Buys. There's a TV show called Justified. I don't think it's happening in Montana, but the guy has a cowboy hat, so here mm. you go. Um, Milandino Physio says, here, Kuwait, nowadays in summer, the temperature is around 50 degrees Celsius. Wow. Last Friday was 52 degrees Celsius. How do you even like live in that temperature? Yeah. I can't even imagine. Right now, outdoors is minus one for us. So <laughs> yeah. here you go. We, th the whole outside is just white. Not with snow, but it's uh, it's been really frosty and you can't even see like the next house next year because it's so foggy it's just super cold in new zealand right now or at least in the center of the north island uh cool so ben Fury says uh p.s i only have a local driving license not the international one yet is it hard to go about far from auckland 
Well, you'll be better off having a driver license. Otherwise, you will have to use in, uh, like a national bus network such as Intercity or Skip Buses, which are both the same company. Uh, and so, yeah, we do have plenty of videos on the channel about traveling around New Zealand by bus. But if you do want extreme flexibility, you may want to get yourself your international driving permit. It's not a hard thing to get, but that'd be really handy. But a check, so just look for bus network nz pocket guide and you'll find both writing uh so you'll find on nzpocketguide.com plenty of tips for you and as well you will be able to find um uh videos on youtube clay says sorry i think it's great three in summer and four five the rest of the year so he's still talking about the white water rafting yeah say if you're nuts enough to come back to the needle let's do it yeah, yeah for sure we should yeah i mean i'm really i love white water rafting seriously check our video about rangitata rafting uh, in Geraldine, you 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 see how nuts we Yeah, that was grade five. I think that was the scariest. Oh well, actually, oh, maybe the Wairoa River, which is also a grade five in the North Island. Yeah. I think that was the scariest that I've done. But Rangitata rafting was pretty insane. I love it. I love <laughs> it. Beverly Gibson says, uh, "Thanks for answering my question regarding the F bus. It sounds like the short-term visitor can't open an account. No, sadly, you cannot. Say, so, is it a matter of having an address there? Uh, it's a matter of having an address, and also there is no incentive for the banks, right? Remember, banks are businesses. They're not here to serve you. They're here to make money out of you. They're basically here to exploit you, right? You are basically their 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 way of making money, right? Yeah. So." There is no point for them to go through the hustle of opening a bank account for you to leave a little bit of money, use your card a little bit around and get what, a $10 fee? And then you leave after a few months. There is no interest for them in doing that. They even make it hard at the moment for people on a working holiday visa to open an account because one year is just not long enough. What they want is to get you in the door in order to sell you mortgages and insurance. That's how banks make money. So just opening you a quick everyday account for three months, no interest for them to do that. So for this reason, yeah, they're making really hard and basically impossible. And they'll make kind of barriers right here. They're like, oh, no, you don't have the right visa. Or, no, you don't have the right address and, and all that thing. Mm. Um, Mossen says some people overpack things and bring too many bags and accessories. They can easily travel lightly and buy the necessary in New Zealand. It's more rational and also help local businesses. Yeah, yeah good I mean, tip. I arrived in New Zealand with a carry on, right? <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, we, we always travel quite light when it comes to like our actual kind of packing stuff. Then we obviously have suitcases of cameras and photos and computers because we do our work along the way, but we usually travel quite light, yeah. Laura G, she says, thanks, guys. I have been to New Zealand twice, and my boyfriend is from there. But planning a life there is a bit of a different thing, and other foreigners' opinion is very important. Thanks. She watched all those videos already. <laughs> wow. Cool. So, yeah, there is not much that I kind of would add to, like, kind of how you feel as a migrant. But if you have, like, specific questions that you think we should do a video on, uh, you know, to see the angle on, um, that still fits a little bit the, the tone of our channel, just let us know. Uh, you know, we're always open to suggestions. Mm. Kiwi Lauren says, so looking forward to being back in New Zealand. Is campervan travel popular during winter month as well or just summer? I would imagine it will get cold overnight in July and August. It absolutely will get really cold. But on the other hand, hiring a campervan in uh, July and August in New Zealand is very, very, very cheap. So there is an incentive, yeah. but you have to know that, you know, you're going to need to get yourself a heater. You probably will need to stay in holiday parks so you can plug your camper van and literally use the electric heater in the camper van for the whole yeah. time. And a lot of rental companies, um, they actually do rent out camper van, their camper vans in winters with really small electric heaters. Um, so, but obviously just double check that in the specifications when you are renting your vehicle. But yeah, some companies do include a heater as well. So you don't necessarily have to go out and buy one. Um, we do have articles on nzpocketguide.com giving you um, tips and information on how to stay warm when you are traveling in a camper van in winter. We actually oh. even have an upcoming video on the mm. five tips to stay warm in winter in New Zealand. Yeah. Um, and it's definitely a thing that people do. Of course, traveling by camper van in summer is hugely popular in New Zealand, but there are still people that give it a go in winter and really have an awesome time, just as long as you're prepared and you have, you know, suitable clothing and you're nice and warm. But some people do find actually they over prepare with lots of things like lots of, you know, extra layers and, and blankets and stuff to wear but because the heating up a small space in your camper van it gets really hot really quickly you then find actually you know you don't really need to go too overboard either so um yeah there's ways to keep warm and 
It's yeah. definitely doable and cheaper to do. For sure. Uh, Extreme Talata tells us that the game is not in town today. So that's why you have to warm up early. Makes mm. sense. Uh, okay, Beverly says, I read that New Zealand has a couple of tornadoes every year. Have you ever experienced one? Well, you probably read the news that there was a tornado in Auckland last week. Um, yeah, no, we never experienced one. It's extremely rare. It's, yeah, no, we never experienced one. Then, yeah, it does happen. There is no advanced warning system like you guys have in the US uh, just because it's so infrequent, so quick um that it's not you know it's not really worth spending millions and millions to uh, invest in that but you know with some public outcry they may spend some millions and install that but uh you know you guys you guys are much more tornado versed than we are in new zealand and also our tornadoes are probably a quarter of the size that you have i mean it destroyed like i mean so it damaged like 20 houses uh, only in one tornado because it was lit in in the center of the city but that you know it's dense dense population so the fact that you only damaged 20 houses should tell you how short the tornado was. Don't believe the what the media says about like you know try to amp up everything all the time. It's kind of like you know they try to make you click on that stuff. Yes, there was a tornado, but that was on the raging massive twister that took over <laughs> you know everything, right? Um, cool. Santiago Sanchez Uskanga says hello, guys. Greeting from San Blas Nayarit in Mexico. Hello. Hello. How is it going in Mexico? Uh, Beverly, I uh, say she loves the Justified series. You just like Timothy Oliphant, isn't he? He's the crush of every woman, isn't he? Uh, he's so charming. And uh, she say Yellowstone, the series with Kevin Costner, is filmed near me. Oh, nice, cool. I may watch Yellowstone. Why not? Yay. I like I like the national park. So what? Maybe the series is good. <laughs> Nathan Bay says, "What's the best activity to do with a group of friends?" To do in the South Island? Can you please give me a good amount of ideas? South Island group of friends. All right. So I'm going to assume that you're somewhat young, Nathan. We don't know much about you, so I, but you work at a supermarket in Topo, so I say it's a job for somebody which is under 20 years old. So you're with a group of mates under 20 years old. Going kayaking in Abel Tasman can be really cool. You guys can race a little bit. You can also check out a lot of really cool places. And you get two people per kayak. Really gay, great, good bonding experience. Yeah. The Luge in Queenstown. You can do it in the North Island as well, in Rotorua, but it's really fun to go racing down these downhill go-karting tracks with a group of friends. It's Yeah, it's always better if there's more people. Yes, that's that. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, I think if you go on a short hike, going to check out the Hokitika Gorge, you guys are going to really love it. There's a swing bridge. There's a you know, beautiful river. The water is really cold, so one of you may be nuts enough to go in the water. Um, but yeah, no, it's a, it's a fantastic place to visit. That's a nice short walk. I think that may be quite cool. Yeah. Um, we were just talking about whitewater rafting. Um, that was my next one. Oh. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about whitewater rafting, but that's always really cool to do in a group because you can tend to get like six people in one raft, um, I think. So uh, yeah, or you can just have four people in a raft in the guide. Uh, so yeah, that's always good to do. You can do that in Queenstown. You can do that at uh, Rangit. Rangatata on the Rangatata Geraldine. River in Geraldine, but they're closed at the moment, but they're usually open. And you can do it in Dunedin, apparently. So ask Clay for the details for that. <laughs> um, an easy one. If you are over 18, if all of you guys are over 18, going on a wine tasting tour, it's always fun. You guys are going to start giggling like crazy it's about halfway through the tour because they give you way too many samples. Yeah. So there's some fantastic wine uh, tasting tours around the Marlboro area. So I think you guys may like that very much. Yeah. Uh, I didn't think of my next one just yet. I okay, was, I, can, I was I, so engrossed in your answer. I was like, oh, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> uh, cool. Do you want another idea? I can give you another idea. Um, I think one, it's similar to the kayaking, but there is some somewhere called Pelorus Sounds where you can do like kind of blow up kayaks and everything. It's really cool. You go Pelorus River. Pelorus yeah. River, yeah. And uh, yeah, so kayaking on the Pelorus River is really nice. Very different than what you will get in Abel Tasman. And that will also, um, you know, get you guys into some of the Hobbit filming locations, which is quite nice. Uh, I'd say quad biking in yep. Hanma Springs, for instance, uh, or at uh, On Your Bike in Greymouth. You know, it's a self-driving thing and you follow your guide on a trail. But, yeah, it's cool to sort of experience that with a group of friends as well and sort of follow each other around on quad bikes and see beautiful scenery. 
Um, so it's not really an activity per se, but a road trip around the Catlins. So it's uh, south of Dunedin. You guys all hop in a car and you go check out. There is some beach with sea lions. There is some amazing waterfall. There is really a lot of pit stops to go there. So it's kind of like it's amazing kind of road trip there. So I will definitely do that. You know, if I get a group of like four people, I'm definitely putting them in the car and I go there. Yeah. Hot pools is always a good one. Yeah. I know you've probably experienced that in the North Island a lot, but there are some cool um, hot pools in the South Island also. Again, Hanma Springs, or you can go to Tekapo Springs in Lake Tekapo. Uh, you can hire out hot pools, the onsen hot pools in Queenstown. Yeah. Uh, so there are always good to just sort of you know after you've done an active day go to a hot pool and sit back relax with your friends and um natter about life uh yeah. beverly is saying if you go on uh on the marlboro wine tour uh, head to the framingham uh winery and we cannot agree more there is yeah. a video of us going to framingham over there it's pretty nice and um yeah, if I have to give you one last one, I will tell you to go uh, seal swimming or a dolphin swimming in uh, in Kaikoura. It's really cool to do with the group. Yeah. I hope that's a lot of ideas for you, Nathan. Let me know if you do have some more. Hey, guys, everybody says hi to Robert over there. He's the guy who did all the research for the news roundup over there. So Robert just showed up in the live He's chat. He's our right news now. producer. So everybody <laughs> says hi to Robert right now. Whoop, whoop. Hello, Robert. Anyway, what Mosen is saying, I encountered many international travelers that assume the destination is a deserted places without many shops and accessibilities. So a video with showing different shops and options uh, can open many eyes. Yeah, so yeah, I, I may just do that. That may be a good idea. Um, we do have already quite a lot of videos talking about food shopping and all that. So yeah, I, I may try to find a way to cover something else. That's, that is a decent idea. Clay says, I was looking at Google Earth last night, Oakland Island and Campbell Island. Can anyone go there? Have you been? Is there anything worth seeing? So if you guys don't know, Oakland and Campbell Island are sub-Antarctic Island, which are, um, you know, belongs to New Zealand. Um, the only people that go there are scientists and conservation workers. Um, and you can... Yeah, yeah. Go. No, go. Uh, and you can go on sub-Antarctic cruises yes. to visit there. I don't um, think you set foot on the island, do you? Uh, I think... They do. They do set for just for like half a day, and they can go to. Oh, like, you will go. You will get a tender boat to go there. Though. Yeah, so yeah. You, you can't. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, they will. I, I'm sure they have some activities set up of like a quick tour or something of yeah. like seeing the wildlife. But yeah, there. But those subantarctic cruises, they're you know they're a pretty you know premium sort of experience and like a pretty pretty expensive. So yeah. Uh, only yeah, a few lucky people get to go do those sort of things, but they usually depart from. Um, from Invercargill, uh, sometimes Bluff. Actually, maybe some of them um, depart from Dunedin as well, Clay. So uh, you could catch yourself a cruise from Dunedin to uh, one of those islands. But, there you go. Yeah, if you ever want to treat yourself. <laughs> They're not cheap, those uh, Sementati yeah. cruises, though. <laughs> Mark Lockwood say, hey, support your channel. Uh, my 20 years old had to cut a one-year visit to New Zealand to six months because of COVID, but he's going to try to come back after finishing Manchester. Manchester um uni he loved it nice nice well that's the thing a lot of people have uh, so many travel plan changed right and so i think that some people literally will come back to new zealand because they just didn't get enough it mm. was kind of a mad rush when that when everything hurt hits yeah. that's crazy okay i'm gonna try og jekpa og says i want to know if someone with work visa can enter new zealand border um uh, well it's only uh well it depends really what type of visa you have if you are actually you know which country you're from for instance uh it really depends on your situation because the borders to new zealand are close to most international travelers so if you do have a work visa the best thing to do is to contact immigration new zealand um are you going to put their uh okay if you want yeah so uh, Robin's going to put you an address <laughs> on screen right now for uh, immigrant for the Immigration New Zealand website. It's best to get in contact with them. They'll know exactly what visa you have. You can discuss with them to see if the borders are actually open to you. Because um, it really is like the really only a select few people can come to New Zealand at the moment. And we don't have the expertise to know if you particularly can come to New Zealand. Yes. Extreme Talotas, I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you for popping in, mate. Uh, Beverly says, which online service of mobile app do you use for weather forecast in New Zealand? Uh, so I use one called YR, so letter Y, letter R. It's actually Norwegian, um, and I find them the most accurate and very easy app to use and everything. And I know it's crazy. The Norwegian app is the best one, I think, for New Zealand. 
but there is med service in New Zealand, for example, or Niwa and IWA, which is based in New Zealand as well. I just, I don't know, I just find them like, you know, when you compare them and very often you just, they're more accurate. And yeah. the New Zealand weather is so changeable. I think they they, may, they must have like some, some um, uh, algorithm which are better or something like that. Um, so yeah, I think they're the best. Sometimes you can't rely on any weather for Yes, oh, I mean, <laughs> and that's still going to be, uh, you know, that's still going to be 50-50 chance it's right or not. Yeah. But yeah. Robert is here, as I said. So he said, I discovered a company called BookMe. They seem to offer some savings and activities in New Zealand. Have you got any feedback on them? Yeah, don't use them. Um, so uh, because you get feedback, sorry, because you get discounts and everything like that, right? So if there is not enough people for a tour, for example, the, you, the tour literally will be canceled because you're not a full paid customer. Well, if you go toward like more, if you book with companies like Viator, which don't offer discounts or uh, with directly with the operator, you're much better off doing that. Um, also, when you're going to notice that there is only discount at certain times and most of the time they're going to try to upsell you for full price and their refund policy is not really great and everything. So I will I will stay away from BookMe if I were you. We've also had um, some very yeah. interesting experiences. I'm not sure if it's with BookMe or with uh, the Groupon. One of those sort of uh, websites you know, anyone can sort of put their, um, their you know, offering their activity on there. So sometimes there's people that put up activities that aren't actually, you know, an actual tourism business. So once you get to the place, it can be very different to what it, you know, the listing says. It's kind of like using Airbnb when you're doing accommodation. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, what they sort of say on the listing is very different to where you get there. So it's, it's, very, it's a good idea to actually, if you are using those sort of... Um, booking sort of websites it's best to actually you know do research on the company make sure that they are a legitimate business that you know will do the thing they say they're going to yeah. do so you know just just also be aware that anyone can put their listings on book me and on groupon and those sort of websites yeah so that's why for example on the on the site and that okay you know we list all the activities and everything we we don't really li link to book me we rather link to like uh, cheap advisor for example and so you can read reviews of other people and all that it's mm. a, yeah we just like you guys to be safe yeah um beverly says my cousin works at framingham wine oh that's cool, cool. framingham wine is the place to work at it's the it's the winery that i feel like when we've done we've Rock done on. yeah we've done uh most well, not most, but we've done quite a lot of wine tours in Marlborough and every single wine tour, every single company seems to take people to Framingham. And that's it's always a highlight. Obviously, for good reason. Nathan, say thank you very much for the idea. You're very welcome, mate. We are happy to... Who are you traveling with? Give us more context a little bit. That'd, that'd mm -hmm. be fun to know. Um, Clay says, uh, okay, so those subantarctic islands are just cold island. Then nothing was breaking the bank account for them. Well, you know, they have penguins and everything. I mean, it's still kind of worth if, yeah. seeing. But if, I feel if you're like, into yeah. seeing, you know, subantarctic wildlife, which is kind of more what they're about, and, you know, it's a sort of, oh, it, it would be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Yeah. That That's what it's for. But but that would cost you more than a trip to Nui for yeah. the whole family, just, yeah. just for context, right? And also, you get to pre see some pretty cool stuff on the Otago Peninsula near Dunedin, seeing penguins, sea lions, all that sort of thing. So yeah. uh, I, I think you're pretty lucky to see the uh, wildlife that you get to see in Dunedin as well. All right, let's look at the... I'm going to close the poll. I just realized I, I forgot. So I'm going to end the poll. That. We got 33 votes on the poll, guys, and 91% of you want us to do a quick news roundup every week, and 9% say no. So now it's, uh, the pressure is on Robert. Robert, you're going to have to email me a quick news roundup every week now so I can, uh, can do that quick roundup right here. So we'll have to organize something with him. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, glad to hear that you guys really liked it. Uh, it, it, it was fun to, to quickly do. Um, you know, it was very opportunistic because Robert really did uh, send us a lot of information. So I just had to read those things. But yeah, we'll, um, we'll try to fit that in maybe at the beginning of every of the live sessions or something like that. that that'd be quite cool. Uh, Robert's news segment. Ta da! Yeah. Oh, is that going to be the jingle? Yeah, <laughs> which is going to be confusing because then people are going to think my name is Robert and not Robin and they're going to be mm. all confused uh, because they're not going to get a story behind it and all you guys that were watching today will know you guys will be in the inn yes uh, alright anyway thank you for voting on that poll and you see I was I was refrained today I only did one poll so here you go yeah. I'm learning <laughs> you've come a long way yeah uh, Nathan says I hope to travel to Australia or somewhere else once everything goes back to normal yeah 
Maybe try Nui. I, I, I cannot wait to get to Nui again. Mm. And also, we are planning some travel, so we may uh, show you some other uh, places to visit mm. as well um, soon. From, from New Zealand, yeah. Yeah, going from New Zealand to some of the South Pacific Islands. We are, we are putting things in action. Um, Mossen says, I'm worried about price inflation after the border openings because of many tourists will run New Zealand. I am <laughs> one of them. Um, mm. So... I don't think there's going to be a massive rush of tourists coming to New Zealand. I think it's going to be gradual. So I don't think it's going to be a crazy price inflation. However, things are going to go up. Uh, the border levy is already going to move from $20 to $63. So that's already going to go up. And you are unlikely to find a lot of discounts for accommodation, car rental, camper van rental, activities and all that. Companies are going to want to make their money back for... Um, you know, for the lack of basically income for the last few years. So it won't be cheap, that's for sure. There is no like reassuring answer I can give you. I just don't think that traveling in New Zealand is going to be cheap post-COVID. It is going to be expensive. Even mm. on flights, flight won't be cheap. When you look at flights right now, they are not discounted at the moment. They are, yeah. they are, they are, they are still. Yeah, a lot expensive. of a lot of you know uh, businesses in the tourism uh, industry are trying to really desperately make some money back from uh, you know losing out quite huge over these COVID times. So yeah, don't expect people to be like giving discounts all over the place. I just really don't see that happening. No. And uh, Nathan's telling us that he is, um, he hoped to travel with his friends once he's finished planning uh, and he wants to go to the South End. He's going to have fun. Cool. Mate, you're going to love it. All right, guys. Well, that's a good place for us to stop this. We haven't session. had Anthony yeah. telling us, you know, I'm st stay safe. I'm here to the end. So um, it's because the phone is in his back pocket. Okay, he can't just <laughs> yeah. pick up the phone and tell us all the time. But yeah, we'll have to rely on ourselves to remember. Um, yeah, <laughs> Clay says, "Where's Anthony?" Uh, so yeah, don't worry. We'll we'll do. Yes, it. he's here. Okay. So stay safe. We're here to the end. Boom. Anthony's here. And on that note. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So thank you very much for joining us for this very lively live session. It was actually really cool today. You guys had a lot of questions. It was really kind of interactive. You know, sometimes we do have some uh, some of the live, the live sessions when we kind of have to do most of the talking. This time you guys were really kind of, it was really even, I really enjoyed that. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for all of you guys hitting the like button. That's pretty cool. Like 17 like, 21 viewer. I think that's pretty even. That's kind of that's nice. nice yeah. yeah, we didn't go to the nice, even OCD pleasing balance just yet, <laughs> but that's pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah, so we'll be back here next week. But something you guys can very much look forward to this week on the channel. On Saturday, I will take you on a tour. I will show you what it looks like to get a COVID-19 vaccine in New Zealand. And you'll see that it's very different than in Wales. There's no one wearing masks. There's no one wearing hazmat suits. You just hang out, have cookies with people. You get tea and coffee. There's usually free tea and coffee. I mean, it is the most chillax way to get a vaccine. I could even devise in my mind. Yeah. So, yeah. So, it is pretty interesting how, how, you know, chill we're taking it. So, yeah. Make sure to check that out. So, if you're not subscribed or if you have... Um, if you don't have uh, the bell button or anything, click that. It is kind of a funny video for us to show you what it yeah. looks like. Um, so, yeah. And Sandra DeVries says, no mask in the Netherlands either. Oh, oh that's wow. cool. Well, here you go. But, yeah, I was really surprised how we showed up over there. That was really not, like, it was really chill. It was. So, yeah. And Mossen says, I wish you the best with the vaccination. Yeah, so we got it on Thursday. I just need to edit the video for you guys. <laughs> so, I'm just getting myself one week. I'm going to edit that video and put it up. So, that's going to come on Saturday. And then, obviously, next Sunday, we'll be back up. And uh, Laura is going to be here. Laura G is going to be here as well. Here you go. She's she's going to be here every time now, she says. Robin's going to be here. I'm going to be there. And then uh, Robert uh, Robert Laliberte is going to be here. here as our uh, new news producer. Clay is going to be here. Nathan is going to be here. <laughs> Beverly is going to be here. Kiwi Lauren is going to be of here. Of course, she's always Extreme here. Extreme Talauta. He's always here to say hi. Yeah. Uh, there's always going to be... Um, yeah, Milan Dino Fijo is going to be here to ask about the border opening. I mean, you know, if that doesn't <laughs> happen, that's uh, that's going to be that's going to be scary. Baby um, Burns will be here as well. Kalo, she has to be here. She's yeah. here every time now. Of yeah. course, of course, we're going to have Baby Burns as well. Uh, always here. So yeah, with that in mind. <laughs> and on that, after all that nonsense, bombshell, yes, we shall see you next week. Bye Thanks bye. Thanks for joining us this week. Ooh, he says bye today. Cool. See bye. you later, guys. <laughs>